Today, I'm gonna show you a simple addition to your soil that can make a huge difference in your grow. But before we do, Today's video is brought to you by Real Growers Recharge. If you want stronger, healthier plants, if you want bigger roots for better fruits, you gotta check out Real Growers Recharge. It's like an instant compost tea that holds more nutrients at your root zone, breaks those nutrients down, and makes them more plant available, getting more of your nutrients into your plants. Find out more about Recharge over at realgrowers.com. And while you're there, use coupon code SCOTTY420 to get 20% off your first order. Now let's get back to to the show. All right, hi C. I can't wait to get into this one. Okay, this is just like the last video that we did about lights. This is also a very sexy term that I hear people talking about a lot, but only advanced growers seem to know about it. Oh, that's crazy. First off, myco rhizy is sexy. Myco stands for fungus and rhizy stands for root. Not when you say it like mm, that. Fungus root. Yeah, baby. <laughs> okay, so first of all, fungus to me, I immediately think of like a toe fungus. That sounds bad to me. Yeah. So there's beneficial fungi and pathogenic fungi. Some fungi are decomposers. Uh, mycorrhizae forms a symbiosis with plant roots. It grabs on, it, it grows on plant roots. And what it, it's like that fuzz. Sometimes you'll see that fuzz on Those plant big roots. fuzzy roots. All that is surface area. That fuzz, which is the mycorrhizae, the fungi, that is surface area for nutrients and water to hold. And it, you mentioned symbiosis. What do you mean? Symbiosis, it's going to feed the plant. The mycorrhizae is a fungi. It lives on, it needs the sugar. It needs this carbohydrate. The plant can make that through its leaves. So it sends a little bit down to the mycorrhizae, enough to keep it alive, keep it thriving. And then that mycorrhizae grows fungus all over the roots. As the roots expand, that mycorrhizae expands and it increases the water and nutrient holding capacity of, of the plant while forming a physical protector. Think about if you're a bug, if you're a pathogen, you see that root, you're looking to bite into that root, right? Mm -hmm. You bite into it, you get a big mouthful of fungus. Okay, so it's what it's doing is it's living off of the plant and yep. thriving, and then the plant also thrives by it having it there. Yes, symbiosis, right? Okay, and you mentioned I've seen regular roots, and then I've seen roots with mycorrhizae, yeah. and they've got like a fuzz all over them. Uh, you explained a really good <laughs> analogy for me. Help me out here. I like the Wolfman analogy. If I dip my hand in a bucket of water and pull it out, there will be some water stuck to it, right? A little bit. It'll be wet. Uh-huh. Uh, if the wolf man puts his hand in a bucket of water, it's going to be soaked. There is going to be 50, 100 times more water held onto his hand. And that's what happens with mycorrhizae is you've got massively expanding the root zone. Every little root has a bunch of little hairs coming out of it. All those hairs have surface area. They're all uh, ripe for colonization of mycorrhizae. So it's it's cool. Okay, so that's why you were saying it helps the plant hold more water and nutrients at the yes. root zone. Yes. Am I allowed to say massively? Massively expands your root zone. Okay. So besides just creating a bigger root zone, a bigger surface area yeah. and protecting your protecting your plants from other pathogens and pests and stuff, what's the kind of third benefit that we I, get? This one's it? big. So, sorry to cut you off, but I get excited about this one. Do you know how I'm always telling people, don't worry about your pH. You'll be okay. There's a huge buffer. Mycorrhizae is a big part of that buffer. When those nutrients, the bacteria deliver those nutrients to the mycorrhizae, the mycorrhizae is the fixer. The mycorrhizae needs to make transactions with that plant. It needs that. It's not doing it for you know, just for fun. And so it's making the exchange. So if the plant root doesn't accept nutrients at a certain pH, that mycorrhizae can adjust the pH to make the transaction happen. Okay, hey, we'll make this happen, all right? Don't worry. <laughs> so having those mycorrhizae there, if you're worried about something like pH lockout or yep. bad pH in your soil, it, it can actually adjust the pH level at the root zone? It can, yes. Mycorrhizae can adjust the pH level of nutrients and then deliver them to the plant root zone. Drop the mic. Okay, so is this 
just like across the board, I just grab any kind of mycorrhizae because I've seen different types of mycorrhizae. Yeah, they are specific. Normally, they're specific to a certain type of plant. Don't forget that plant's going to make its, you know, its exudate or whatever you want to call it, those sugars. It's going to pump it down to the mycorrhizae, down to the roots. Different plants are going to do that different ways. So different mycorrhizae, they've had hundreds of, I don't know, thousands of years, we'll say, to form these associations. So specific mycorrhizae cultivars or species uh, colonize, colonize uh, specific plant roots. So my favorite plant that I'm growing uh -huh. needs a specific mycorrhizae. Okay, so help me understand this, because yes. I saw a documentary, and they were talking about trees in the forest. I'm looking at the trees behind you on yes. that painting, and they had mycorrhizae that would actually go out and find, yep. but that's not what we're looking for? No, we want that endo. They have two different major classifications of mycorrhizae. Endo mycorrhizae, and just think if you're growing endo, you want the endo mycorrhizae, and ecto, which that does sound like outside, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you, from sea to shine, from tree to shining tree, Susan Simard. If you ever want to check That's something cool out, yeah, it's very cool. That is ectomycorrhizae. That is going and forming a fungal network with all the trees in the forest. That's not what we're doing with endomycorrhizae. We are just creating a fuzz to expand the root surface area and the nutrient holding capacity of the roots. Right, because we're not growing a bunch of plants in one area. No. We're just growing one in the container. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So. I'm looking for endomycorrhizae, and is there a specific endomycorrhizae I'm looking for? Yeah, there is, at least for our favorite plants. We want endomycorrhizae, and we want glomus interatices. That's the genus and the species. Okay, so is this something that naturally occurs? Is this something I have to go out and buy? How do, how do I get mycorrhizae on my plant roots? I mean, in the forest, yes, it'll naturally occur. In our grow rooms, you're going to have to introduce it. So there's all sorts of products out there. Real okay. Growers Recharge. Okay, so this video is brought to you by Real Growers Recharge. Right. Tell me a little bit about how Real Growers Recharge works. Uh, it's mycorrhizae. It is lab-grown mycorrhizae, so it's very consistent. Some of the mycorrhizae products that are out there, literally, they'll inoculate trees. They'll take the tree roots and grind them up, and that's how you pour that on your plant roots and make a physical contact with your plant roots. Uh, there's also lab grown, which is uh, very uh, consistent. And that's what I'm going for with recharge. All right. Okay. So when do I want to start? You said introducing, when do I want to start introducing mycorrhizae to my roots? As early as possible during the clone stage, I'll put a little recharge on there. If I have seeds, I will soak my seeds in recharge because don't forget there's pathogenic fungi as well. So right when that seed or that root pops, we want to make Make sure that it is loaded with beneficial fungi if there was any pathogens that were in that root cube or anything they're out competed by the mycorrhizae fungi okay so get it in there right away yeah one more thing that is mycorrhizae is nature's way of mining and holding more nutrient for you what we're doing is loading our plants up with nutrient every three days or consistently. So it makes the mycorrhizae lazy. They're not going to go out aggressively and mine nutrients uh, because they have all the nutrients they need. So what we're really using it for is a buffer. We're making this fuzz on the plant roots and we're using it as a buffer and to hold more nutrient or more water and nutrient at the root zone. That's our big advantage what we're doing here. Okay, so all of this sounds great scientific but why why would i even worry about all this because when you have bigger roots you have bigger fruits baby but that's just my two cents on the matter what about you do you use mycorrhizae how do you get it into your grow let me know in the comments and if you like this video please smash that like button hit that subscribe button share this video with another grower you know and check out the other couple of videos youtube's recommending i know you're gonna dig them